Rugby Championship kicks off this Saturday or Sunday, 3 o'clock in the morning, if you're here in New Zealand. Uh, the Springboks hosting the Wallabies at Alice Park. It's going to be a pretty, a pretty important game. The Springboks are doing interesting things with their selections, this rugby championship, so uh, it's pretty important for them to to get off the ground running with a, I guess you would call, quite experimental team from, from Rassi. Uh, the Wallabies have picked a couple of debutants as well, so it's definitely not a settled lineup for them. They're missing a couple of big guns in Pocock and uh, Falau. Different reasons for them, but hey, that is what it is. Um, so yeah. It's that shorter competition this year that pretty much every game is essential to win. These two teams in recent years, the last five games, it's two to the Springboks, one to the Wallabies, and two draws. So there's not much between them. Uh, average score across those last five games, 22-19 to the Springboks. So it is very, very tight. And with the Springboks making this many changes, um, it's going to be at altitude, so... That's a bit of advantage, but it does look like it could be an interesting one. I'm still not sure if I can get up at 3 o'clock to watch it or whether I watch it as soon as I get up after the All Blacks game. A little worried if I watch the All Blacks game, one of the commentators will spoil the result of this one. So um, I will think about how to best manage that. But hey, I'll put the teams in the description so you guys can have a look. But you'll get the picture what I mean about kind of experimental team for uh, the Springboks. The... The starting lineup with the front row uh, is in Tawira, in Bonambi, and in Yukane. So obviously you've got no Malcolm Marks there. He is being... Well, Rossi's plan is to kind of reduce the travel uh, burden on the players by sending some guys across uh, this way early and then perhaps not bringing these players, or at least not all of them. So uh, Marks is one of those players who's not, not in South Africa for this. Um... But Inyakani and the Beast, that's a pretty a pretty experienced propping duo. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, second row, Itzabeth, who is captain, and Lud Diaka. Lud has been injured for quite some time, so I'll be interesting to see if he comes back at 100%. Uh, when Itzabeth came back after a long layoff, I think it was about a year ago, he really hit the ground running. There was like no, apart from his not being able to go 80 minutes, his performance levels were, were there. So we'll see if that's the same for Lud. Uh... Back row, you've got Reinhard Alstart, who's going to make his debut. So he's one of the guys who's been called over from France. So it's good that he's getting some game time. Uh, tackling machine, Peter Steph Dutoy. And uh, Francois Lowe is there at number eight. So he's going to be pilfering a fair bit as well. So it's an interesting back row. Uh, I will be curious to see how they, they line up. Whether they're going to shift positions, depending on whether they're attacking or defending scrums, uh, will be one to watch. But I expect loads be the main guy attacking the breakdown from those guys anyway uh the backs you got herschel yankees making his debut at number nine i thought if he's going to play he's definitely going to play from the bench but nope straight into the starting lineup and he probably was the form number nine from from any of the south african teams in super rugby this year so it's a good reward for him out in yankees is at number 10 so you're going to have a lot of commentary with yankees to yankees which will make life interesting Yankees did not have his best season, um, by which I mean Elton. Uh, for the Lions, the Lions were a bit subpar compared to what we're used to, and that was kind of part of that, so we will see how he goes. Uh, Esther Hazen and Creel are your midfield combo. I was kind of hankering to see Esther Hazen and Um build on their Sharks partnership, and then perhaps if you're going to pair Creel with anyone, you pair him with someone like Dale Ende, but what do I know? Um, Rossi's doing his thing, so we'll see how that combo goes as well. Uh, and also wings, you've got Mapimpi and Kosi and Halant at fullback. So it's still a pretty strong looking side. I mean, I love that it, he's playing Halant. Uh, I think LaRue is going to be in the side that plays over here. So uh, I still like the idea that Halant gets minutes because he is one of my favorite players from South Africa. Reserves, so you got Brits, the, the veteran, who's going to come on. I guess early in the second half and get those old legs moving. Uh, Kaboka is the opposite end of the age scale. He's one of the up and coming young props and I'm dying to see him get in that Springbok jersey, which is cool. Uh, Vincent Koch is there as the reserve tight head. Again, European based player, a player going to bring him back. Might as well give him some game time. Marvin Ori is the backup lock. Marcel Kutsia is there. I would have had him starting, but again, he's had injuries and whatnot, so perhaps it is best to ease him into the lineup. Uh, Kubas Reinach is there as the backup number nine. Again, I might have shifted him. Like, I did a video about the team I picked 
again, it's just a fan's pick, but um, I would have seen less throwing in the deep end to Yankees to come from the bench, but um, obviously Rusty's got faith in him, which is cool. Uh, Franz Stein and Dylan Lades round out the other two subs. So, I mean, Dylan Lades can play pretty much any position in the back line except nine, and likewise Stein, so it'll be interesting to see who they end up replacing. They haven't called this a second string lineup, but there's kind of been talk about it. Uh, whether it's an A and a B team, who knows? Uh, Rusty Erasmus has said this is not a sign of disrespect to the Wallabies. It's just about managing the travel schedule. So I'm still pretty happy with that lineup, man. Obviously, there's a few big names missing, but there's still plenty of, of talented players there that, that they should at home uh, be able to put in a pretty good effort. The Wallabies... Uh, their squad has got, um, I guess, a bit more experience about it, but also some guys who uh, are relatively new in the Wallabies jersey. Uh, the front row is Slipper, Fainga, and Kepu. So you've got two guys from the Brumbies and one from the Waratahs. Uh, it might have been nice to have that whole um, the whole front row from, from the Brumbies, but Ala Alatoa and Scott Seo have been injured, so they've even had to call up Harry Johnson Holmes who only arrived in Johannesburg quite recently, so uh, he's going to get his debut from the bench. Uh, Isaac Rodder and Roy Arnold are the locks. Expect to see Arnold take a lot of the aerial ball, I would say. Uh, loose forwards, you got Salakai Lotto, who is like that kind of enforcer lock loose forward who's going to be at six. Uh, Michael Hooper's at seven, and he is captain, and Izzy Nasarani will make his debut from number eight. I do like the idea that the Wallabies now have a proper number eight. As much as that, Michael Hooper and David Pocock combo was kind of a new thing when he unleashed it just before the World Cup uh, in 2015. I feel like it's maybe doing more harm than good at the moment. Teams are pretty well used to playing it and they do lack in other areas when they add to that extra breakdown factor. So uh, see if this is a more balanced lineup. Nick White. Come back from uh, coming back from Exeter, he gets the start at number nine, which is an interesting one. Uh, Bernard Foley still gets the spot at ten, so it's not um, it's not Lilia Fano who I thought might get a run, but I guess Foley is the the incumbent. Karevi and Kurandrani, I'm very excited to see that midfield go. Can you imagine Karevi running at Esther Hazen? Um, that's going to be a pretty good clash. Uh, outside backs, it's. Um, Reese Hodge on one wing, not the quickest winger, uh, but he's versatile. He can cover most of the back line in a pinch. Uh, Dane Hallett Petty on another wing, and then Tom Banks gets the nod at fullback. Again, I expect those guys to kind of shift around a wee bit as the game goes on because Dane Hallett Petty is quite comfortable at fullback. Tom Banks is pretty comfortable on the wing. Bit of gas there as well. So, yeah. Uh, I should mention the bench. Harry Justin Holmes, as I said, Taniela Tupo, despite. Um, having a wee injury, a cut on his arm when his phone got stolen the other day. Uh, he still plays, so I guess his wounds are not too bad. Jordan Ulisi is the backup hooker. Please stay injury free. Uh, Rob Simmons is there as the reserve lock. That's neither here nor there. Jack Dempsey, Will Guinea, Matt Tamua, and Kurtley Beal. So there's no... There's no kind of out-and-out -out winger on that, on that bench. I guess they're looking at moving Hodge or potentially one of the other guys around if one of those guys goes down because, I mean, Beal can cover fullback, I guess, but I'd rather have somebody else there, to be fair. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Bookies for this one have got the Springboks by four points, so they're picking it to be pretty close. Uh, as I said, it is an experimental team from the Springboks, and the Wallabies have certainly got a few new combos in there as well, but I guess, for the most part, pretty established. A lot of those guys have played... Um, some serious time in the Wallabies jersey before, but again, some newcomers too. So it is going to be an interesting one to watch. You guys let me know your thoughts on how you think this one is going to play out. Uh, if you're confident you know how the game is going to go, do join my Super Brew tipping pool. You can put your predictions in there, and we've got a leaderboard to see who's going to get the best results. Sign on there. And um, yeah, there's like 180 odd people there at the moment. So join in, see if we can get over 200 to, to play Super Brew just for this very short rugby championship. Uh, on Patreon as well, I will be doing um, some kind of recap videos on uh, the Super Brew picks to see how my picks went and to see uh, if there's any trends as to who's picking better because you can uh, imagine most people will back their own country to win for better or worse, but I guess we will see. So yeah, if you guys... Um, uh, enjoy the content and uh, got a few dollars to spare. 
do feel free to join me on Patreon. A couple of guys have already done so already, so that is much appreciated to you guys. Um, but anyone else, always welcome there as well, if you are willing and able. But yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the game. How do you think it's going to go? And um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.